all the plans that you have, that you have laid for tonight, for all the things that you are bringing forward, God, for your city and for your people. We worship you today, Father. We come in unity and worship you.
<laughs> but in 2015, after being behind the desk for so many years, hallelujah, uh, the Lord says, I'm moving you into the apostolic. And it scared the wits out of me. It scared the daylights out of me because I was, I mean, I could handle the teaching, you know, as an elder, as a, you know, as a home group or whatever, you know, as an accountant, as a treasurer for the churches and the the different uh, organizations that we had. I uh, said, so that, well, that's my spot, you know. I'm, I hold up the hands of other people, you know, of other ministers. And, and I was always in the background, you know. I was behind the desk. And so the Lord said, I want you to get out from behind the desk because I'm moving you into the apostolic. Wow. So I didn't know what to do with that in 2015. That's what, I, before I met Arabelle, why I even knew about Intercession City. Uh, so I... Uh, I, I had lunch with my pastor. I said, Pastor, I said, the Lord said that he was going to move me into the apostolic. And I said, I thought he would really just jump on me. He said, no, you are, you're not an apostle. <laughs> and I said, he said, yeah. He said, God is moving you into the apostolic. This was 2015. And I said, oh, okay. And he said, I'm going to confidentially share something with you. I haven't announced it yet. He said, I'm going to um, be giving up my five churches, which I was a part of, you know. Uh, and also, uh, we had a ministerial or organization. Uh, we had about 300 pastors and churches and mission organizations all over the world, you know. And I, I was, you know, on the board, and I signed the ordination certificates and all that. And so we had these organizations. That I'm going more into the organization and I'm going to be setting up more churches and mission organizations and he said he wanted me to go with him you know as to do the apostolic work you know and he said that uh, you know that uh, he invited me to go with him and uh, I thought that's what I was going to be doing but at the same time there was a the Lord uh, allowed me to discover my dad's photo album, and I discovered Intercession City, and also discovered Arabella. Because <laughs> she was going into Intercession City. And this was... I went in the photo album. Yeah, yeah, you sure went in the photo album. <laughs> but, she, but, but Intercession City, pictures of all of Intercession City, all of the pictures. Uh, and I had some uh, pictures that, never, that no one else had. I had to actually, when they left the, the party, the group that came down here in 1935, uh, O.C. England came in 1934 and purchased the property. They went back to Point Pleasant, West Virginia. But my dad, the next year my dad came and they all moved. And I have pictures of the party coming down from West Virginia. Uh, my dad took those pictures coming to Intercession City. And so the Lord says, no, uh, I won't. I want you to go back and rebuild my city. I want my city back. I want my city to live again. And this was like 70 years I was in Pensacola for 70 
years. It was like the time of captivity when the Israelites uh, were in Babylon. And so they went back to Jerusalem. This place, Intercession City, was called the Jerusalem of Florida. So I was going back after 70 years. The Lord says, the captivity period is over. Amen. I'm going to, I want my city back. And hallelujah. I want my Whoa. city, hallelujah, yeah. wow. to return back to the city of prayer where it was 24-7 prayer for 13 years at four different locations. They called the, the Wesleyan Church here the large house of prayer. And there was three other prayer cabins where prayer went up day and night. They said that the altar rails was stained with the tears of those who cried out for worldwide revival. So God wanted worldwide revival. It was cut off. It was divided in 1947. The devil stepped in, took captive, the city captive. But the Lord says, I am going to return Intercession City back as the capital, the spiritual capital of Florida. Amen. So, he chose me. Now, i got to tell something else that happened in regard to the apostolic. Uh, there was a, a, a prophet that came through the Brownsville Revival, and the prophet came and uh, spoke to different staff members. I was the accountant for the Brownsville Revival for seven years. And so, I went in to get a word from the Lord and he said, uh, he saw a rod. And it was a rod like Aaron's rod. It, it budded, you know, and it blossomed and it produced almonds. And he saw this rod. And he said that I was going to go to a particular place with this rod of authority. And he went on and on and on. And he was describing intercession. See, that was 20 years before I came here. Glory. That was 20 years before. And then I received the rod. When we had the tent meeting over here, I received the rod, oh. and this rod was presented in the, the tri-state area. This rod came from Dr. Nigel Dickpon. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! And Robin Cerny, right? She said the Lord told her it was presented to the tri-state, the with H A P N. Robin Cerny, who was head of Florida, the HAP in Florida, at that time, she said, the Lord told her that this rod belonged to the center of Florida, and it belonged to us, to me. And so she came down, and we had invited Robert Slaridan here to speak under the tent. She came in and did a presentation of this rod of authority over this area of Intercession City. But I found out later that we're not that my apostolic role was not only intercession city, but God wanted to expand it further to the entire state. So God has given me a rod of authority, just like Aaron's rod. And I just want to uh, thank Dr. Big Pine for this rod here because it was yeah. him that had presented it, and it was transferred to us. And I thank God for the apostolic. That it is a responsibility. Right. It's a responsibility. Amen. Anytime that God commissions you, there's a greater responsibility. Right. So I'm going to need a lot of prayer. Arabella and I are going to need a lot of prayer. And that's all I had to say. Amen. <laughs> 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 oh, <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> I told y'all it's not me that do all the talking. <laughs> I really mean to do all the talking. Um, he just he does that does nudging things. I mean, I got, um, but I felt the Holy Spirit saying that he should uh, share first. I didn't know he was going to share that, though. I didn't really know what he was going to share. But isn't that powerful? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. You know, you guys are, um, this is this is like, I don't know how to say it, but it's, it's very significant. Very, very significant. And I am thankful when I look around here, um, you all come from all over, you know. But we have the mayor with us today. I tease him about being a man. <laughs> but he lives here in Intercession City. He's been here for a considerably long time. 
he served this community, he knows everything and everybody. You know, that's what the mayor is like, right? Mm -hmm. And so we always call him the mayor because he comes in. When we have a uh, prayer on Thursdays, I mean on Wednesdays, he comes and brings us donuts and he oh, wow. gives us all kinds of little goodies and things like that. And, and he's always in a hurry. He's going somewhere else to take care of something else, you know. And I just want to recognize John Mangini with us on tonight. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just very, you know, it's, I'm just very thankful. It's a blessing to have someone like that in the city. Uh, in a city that uh, has got a lot of undercurrent, you know. <laughs> a lot of little undercurrent, a lot of behind the scenes, you know, and all this kind of stuff. But you know what? This is God's city. Amen. This is really God's city. Um, and I love anything that God loves. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but <laughs> I better jump on that wagon, yes. I'm going to tell you. Yes. I love what God loves. I really do have a love for the city and a love for the people. Um, and uh, my heart beats for the people of the city because, you know, that's God's heart, you know. He wants everybody to be saved and everything. And so we're super excited. We're so thankful for all of you coming out tonight. Uh, it's, I was talking to Wesley last night about tribes, you know, and uh, how God taught me something that's very significant this week, not this week, this year. I might be a little tired, so I may say the wrong word every so often, but I'll fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the words, you know, I told Mariah last night, I was calling things the wrong thing and all that kind of stuff. I said, I'm just a little tired. I'm going to go get some rest, and I'll talk better tomorrow. <laughs> I'll have it fixed tomorrow, you know. But um, something that God really, really drove home and expressed and showed me this year is what we see does not mean that's all he has. Amen. 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 He is vast beyond our comprehension. That's right. And so he showed me this year I, I have that little thing you know you see here on on the rise up it, god gave us this in 17 rise up one united bars in 15 and um it was used to be rise up prayer ministries that was back in 92 actually when god really started me on this and then in 15 16 i think it was 15 16. <laughs> anyway, he spoke to me about um, One United Voice. And, but he said, no intercessor alone, no intercessor left behind, and no intercessor down. So I got that little thing there, you know. I have a hard time leaving anybody out. <laughs> I'm getting a whole lot better. I'm a whole lot better. I really, I feel like I, feel like I went to, I, actually when we went to Moravian Falls, I feel like I got delivered. I really do. Because uh, when God invites you somewhere and you come up with excuses, why not to, you know, uh, lay everything down and follow him? You know, I got to do like God do and just <laughs> keep going. <laughs> I realize I got to do like he do and just keep going. I'm like, oh. <laughs> you know, but um, I look around and, and it's almost like when we went to you know, Moravian Falls in May. God told me in January to invite the intercessors to Moravian Falls to bring the overflow back to Florida. That's what I asked one is about. And when I looked around at the 23 that was with us in Moravian Falls, I thought, Wesley, this is a different crowd. You know, it was not the normal, or I should say the usual tribe that I run with. The usual ones that I would go with. It was those that I wouldn't have invited, but God told me to invite. And they were in a, yeah, the Lord just spoke to me. I, you know, let me just change some things around. The regular tribe, uh, hey man. Amen. Hallelujah, bless your heart. <laughs> um, the regular tribe were those that said, no, well, I can't, you know. I, you know, you know what they said? They said what was said in Luke. 
different excuses. All the different excuses that was get, given to the master. And I wasn't, I wasn't trying to find that. I wasn't, you know, the Holy Spirit brought that to my attention. And I looked and he said, remember when the master sent the servant out to invite those to the table. And, and literally from one to the next to the next, I heard every excuse a couple of times. Wow. That troubled me so much. That just, that just kind of, I just did something to me. You know, it took me a minute. It took me calling Dr. Yolanda McComb and calling my Gopao, Dr. Dr. Big Pond, and calling mother to, to help me. <laughs> to get me set free and say, well, that's the body of Christ. <laughs> that's what they told me. I was like, whoa, I, I got, you know, the master invited. You, you know what I'm saying? How do you, how do you, how do you, you know? But anyway, praise God. I'm sure I probably made an excuse as to, you know, here and there. <laughs> What, what, God, what is going on tonight is really serious. And it's very important. <laughs> I have a tendency to say that a lot. But anyway, and you know, everything with God is life or death for me. So for me, it is serious. You know, uh, and I say that because of what Wesley just shared. And we can share story after story after story of God's plan with Intercession City. God's plan with our, even our being married. God's plan with, you know, Mother shared earlier today about how she came in my life. And her coming into my life brought forth the intercession part of, of you know. And then uh, I was sharing with the ladies about Dr. Big Pond, who I lovingly call Go Pond O, and how God even brought that about. Go Pond O is what is that? <laughs> I called him and asked him. Papa. I would pop him. Yeah. Father or elder. Father or elder. Go Pao. I was sitting at the uh, at my desk one day, and the Lord just I began to just have a burden for him and prayer. And I was like, and and the whole Uchi tribe and everything. And I was like, and I started looking and researching. And I was like, what was going on? And, and the Holy Spirit just began to really move upon me to get in contact with him and, and ask, what do they call fathers in, within your tribe? Go, Paul. And, he, and the Holy Spirit said, you needed that to complete the breaking of the orphan spirit off of Intercession City. So because what had happened is, what has happened is Lauren, which is my, you know, beach buddy. <laughs> There's a story behind that one. <laughs> That's kind of how me and Lauren met a little bit. <laughs> um, Lauren um, was coming from All Tribes, D.C. And she contacted me and she said, I talked with Dr. Big Pond and he said he wanted to come back to Intercession. I told him about what you guys was doing in Intercession City. He said he wanted to come back because Intercession City is the womb of Florida. Whoa. So he came when we put the tent up for the first 100 days of prayer revival, April 21st, 2019. And he came those first two or three days, three, two days. And we were sitting under the tent. And Gopal was sitting there and he was sharing um, just very apostolically, just speaking and releasing a word into the city. He had walked around and he had prayed, walking around in the city and everything. And he speaks and releases this word. And the Holy Spirit speaks to me and said, ask him to be your spiritual father. And I said, oh, my God. I said, oh, he going to think I'm one of them really weird intercessors. <laughs> you know? No way. <laughs> he got a little jokey tell about them intercessors. And so I was like, oh, he going to think I'm one of them. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh, my God. 
God, what am I supposed to do? You know, and I never really thought about needing a spiritual father because y'all heard my, my mom today, right? Well, you got a mother like that, you don't need a spiritual father. I mean, that's what I think about it. And so I never thought about it, but I went to him after service, and I, I walked up to him, and I was really kind of bashful, if you can imagine that, right? But I was, <laughs> I was like, you know, uh, the Lord kind of told me, you know, that I needed to ask you to be my spiritual father. And, you know, I just really would appreciate it if you would pray about it. That's what I said. <laughs> and so he just grabbed me and hugged me. And he says, oh, I don't need to pray about it. I'll just take you right now. <laughs> and I, 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 I just, I'll never forget it. And I boohoo cried. I just cried and cried. And I couldn't figure out why I was crying so and so I talked with uh, one of the intercessors that started in Intercession City with us in 17, and she said, well, Arabella, um, um, First Nation, Apostle to First Nation, needed to um, take you as a spiritual daughter to break the orphan spirit off of Intercession City, because O.C. England came in with orphans. That's how the city, Intercession City, was built, with, by orphans. And that orphan spirit needed to be broken. And so, you know, God can give you something, and um, but really coming to that place of really fully walking into it and receiving it, and, you know, and everything and can be ch a little challenging, but also it's the unknown. And so the Lord um, really dealt me with me about Gopao. And I can barely say Dr. Big Pond anymore because he's Gopao for me, you know. And it just means a great deal. And we're very blessed and excited to have him with us and also um, Mother Simone tonight um, to do this commissioning. Um, but what you need to understand um, and then perhaps hear uh, just a little bit of, and I won't go into all of it because I've probably shared some. Wesley has been teaching on the five spiritual wells of revival. Twelve. Did I say five? See, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Oh, that's what happens. That's, that's kind of like what, that's, you know, if, if I say a few other words, that, you know, just look over it. You know. Um, <laughs> twelve, uh, the twelve uh, spiritual wells of revival. He started yesterday, and he, you know, he finished did some today, but he said he just can't do it in a couple of days. <laughs> it's gonna take More at least three. Day, yeah. It's gonna take at least three. He's gonna be talking about him. He's gonna be talking about him for a while. He's got about forty pages right now, but <laughs> he's <laughs> he's working on that book. I tell you. Um, he's so gifted. He's such a gifted man of God. Um, but, um, you know, the Lord took us to Meridian Falls. We came back with the wells, 12 wells of revival, inner wells of revival, the heart of man. That is what sustains revival. It's the, if you look at revival, right, it's always something within leadership. It's either, normally it's either manon, mammon or infidelity. You know, or Jezebel. Yeah. She liked to show up, yeah. right? And so, but all that is conditioned. That's all about the heart of man. It's all about the heart of man. And so God is, is, is open to us to carry that throughout Florida and to travel Florida and do 24-hour convergences. I came into Intercession City when I first came in in, in 2017. Uh, I came in doing a convergence. It was October 2017, October 5th, 6th, 5th, 5th and 6th. And we were going to be doing 24 hours of prayer, worship, and declaring the word right there in <coughs> a large house of prayer. That's what it was when O.C. England built it. It was called the large house of prayer. Yeah. It's the Wesleyan church now. And that's what we were going to be doing. And the intercessors coming all over Florida to pray and intercede for 24 hours. And God has said that this is what we're to take over <coughs> Florida. And so that's what we will be doing starting in January as uh, different ones invite us in. And we have about six right now locations that we're going to. 
But he said to me that, you know, um, commission, uh, that, that to have trainings and um, different ones coming from training. Um, Gopal came in July and he did a, a mini SWAT and we did it. We did that and we've had Dr. Yolanda, we've had uh, um, Evangelist Garcia. Um, Jan, Jan, no, Jan, hey, no, Jan, no. Anyway, so I have a lot going on. So anyway, <laughs> no, we've mean. had quite a few. Mother Simone has taught in our, in our, um, and so, um, um, so what we're doing is um, for those tonight. What we're doing is um, those that are traveling. Are committed to travel, and I, when I say committed, it's like the flesh started to squirm. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I literally, I had people all the way up until like October, and then I said, "We need to be committed." And they're like, "You can see it all over. It's like something started manifesting." You know, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The word commitment just calls people. It's the truth. I mean, I can say something else and I can sweeten it up, but you know, I and you know, my mom don't. She don't do that. <laughs> just put that on you, mom. I'm sorry, but <laughs> you know, she raised me where there. You know, you just is. This is the way it is, and, and there's no black. There's no black. There's no gray. It is or it isn't, and and. And it really, I mean, I can see it on, it's like a manifestation occurs when you ask a person to be committed. And I was just asking them to be committed to God. Mm -hmm. To, you know, carry, honestly, the character of Christ. Oh, we're just going to, we're going to, it's like you would think I was saying, sign up to go to war in the military for 10 years or something. You know, I said, like, I mean, honestly. Now, they have no problem with that, to be honest, right? You know, volunteer, go into the U.S. military and be committed and sign up, get all the hair cut off, be separated from their family for six months or whatever, you know, I have no problem with that. But let's, you know, let's just, every couple of weeks or every three weeks, we're going to go into a region and we're going to pray for 24 hours, worship and declare the word. Pray over the intercessors there and we're going to leave. Well, uh, well, yeah, well, you know, I'm like, <laughs> you know, what is that about? Um, I mean, really, it, it just, you know, so anyway, praise God, thank you, Jesus. So, those that will be, um, but you know, God told me at the beginning of the year there will be 12 that will be committed. That's what he told me. And I believe that when he told me that, there was 12 that was committed. I don't know where they are right now, but anyway, praise God. And so, <laughs> I, I don't have anything to do with that. Isn't that lovely? You know, you know what I'm talking about. I've been delivered. <laughs> I've been set free. <laughs> There's a song, Mariah. I've been delivered. I've been set free. Anyway. <laughs> so, you know, because I have, you know, I was saying earlier about having this thing about not leaving people behind and leaving them out and all that kind of stuff, and it would trouble me. Well, I'm over that trouble. I am over that trouble. And we're going forward to obey God and do what God's called us to do. That's really being a forerunner in an apostolic. In an apostolic. It really is. That's, that's a whole lot of it. So we're going to be doing that tonight, and Mother and Gopal is going to be um, I'm praying over those that are here uh, to do that and then um, but before that they're going to pray over us and set us in commission us into the apostolic All right. um, and uh, I don't take that lightly you know um there's a push right now in some some arenas, some tribes to, uh, I guess tribes. There's a push right now in some arenas to drop your title, drop your this and drop your that. That's all God. 
Don't establish that. If he's called you to be an evangelist, he established evangelists. If he called you to be a pastor, he established that title. I read the scripture on that. He put that in place. It's been abused. But in the enemy tries to abuse and steal everything God does. That's what he does. That don't mean you do it just because. So I don't have to have the title of apostle. It don't matter to me. That's not my concern. But if God says so, that's my concern. Amen. We, we better wake up to that one, right? We got to wake up to not laying down everything because man say lay it down because it's uncomfortable for them. And look back into the word and see what, what we were talking about earlier today was the essentials of God is his word and what he says. There's a reason for it all. Anyway, one of my little soap operas, I'm sorry. So uh, they're going to um, pray over us and set us in as apostles. And the word of the Lord came to me in in around February, March, to tell the team to call me pastor. They called him pastor of Papa Wesley. <laughs> and um, But they called me Arabella. Well, that's who I am, so I had no problem with that. Uh, so, so, uh, but the Lord said to me to call, have him to call me pastor. And I thought, oh, well, I never wanted to be a pastor's wife, okay? Let's no one be called a pastor. Like, that was like, y'all ain't gonna do that to me. <laughs> you know, it was kind of like, y'all ain't gonna do to me what I see other pastors' wives go for, type of thing. Well, I had to get delivered from that. And, um, so God talked to me about three times about it. And that last time it was like, you need to do what I say, type. Like mama, daddy tell you, you better do what I say, type thing. And so I was like, oh my God, yes sir. So I, I went to, I, <laughs> I still went to Wesley on it and asked him about it. And then I went to the spiritual mom and both of them were like, what's the problem? I don't see what the problem is. <laughs> I guess it's me, right? And so, and then I talked with the team, the Rise Up team, and they were like, well, Pastor, I don't see what the problem is, because that's who you are anyway. That's what you do anyway, so what's the big deal? I'm like, oh, man, can't get out of that. <laughs> so, and so, uh, it took me a couple of weeks to adjust, and then I, um, because I'll try to negotiate with God, but then I'll repent and say, yes, Lord, let's go, you know. Um, and so then um, what happened is about two weeks later, I had a dream vision. You know, the Holy Spirit sits on the side of my bed. I just want y'all to know that. <laughs> and as soon as I open my eyes, I hear all these, I hear all kinds of, God just talk to me. It's, I don't know if it's because I got a fresh brain or what, but I just hear all, I mean, I just hear so much, so as soon as I open my eyes, and I can see it. It's a vision, and I hear it, and all this kind of thing. And I seen us being anointed as apostles. And I was like, oh, I ain't telling nobody this. You know? And everything. I was like, oh. And so then in July, when we had SWAT, uh, Gopal was here. Not here. Uh, he was in Odessa. We were in Odessa. And he was sitting. I was up standing. I was standing up teaching and he was sitting in the back and I turned I, I was like this and I turned around and the Holy Spirit said apostle and I knew he was saying to me that he was supposed to anoint us as apostles so that was July so um, uh, and then in, in October the Lord said he's coming in December I want you to talk to him so I gave him a call in October and um, he said yep yeah, you can do that <laughs> I talked to him a little bit in July and he said let me know when you know and, he, and so this is where we are and I believe truly you know that it has to do with intercession sin mm -hmm. I believe it has to do with intercession sin Amen. it's because God's going to do some building here yes. I don't mean like new buildings I'm talking about building of people Yes. And lives. 
And I believe it has to do with intercession city. I really do. Um, and I'm sure God got more going on than we know about, of course. He always has more. But I believe that's what, what it's all about. And so I, I have, a, I have, a, I have a accepted that. Something shifted when I called Gopal and told him about it. Something shifted in the spirit. Um, and it's just, just quickly. And I was really, I was like, wow, something just happened, you know. When, you're, when you accept what God gives you, when you truly accept what God gives you, then that's when the shift occurs. And it's when God does it. It's not your pursuance, but it's obedience to what God tells you, right? God is so good. So we're going to... <clears throat> We're, from, from, we're going to release and, and allow, oh yeah, that's right, and my girls, I love them. Them two girls right there, they keep me going. They keep me straight. I want y'all to know. <laughs> they talk to me and ask me questions, and I tell them, I tell them what I feel God is saying, and then they remind me, and they tell me, and they keep me straight. I love it. <laughs> so, I, so we were sitting there, and we were relaxing, and just, you know, and Mariah comes with her sweet, soft voice. I had to tell her that, you know, when you, you, it's a 55 plus. I had to tell her to talk into this ear today. <laughs> She's got a really soft voice. It's like, talk in this ear. I can hear you better over here. <laughs> but, um, and she just was asking me, so Pastor, you know, it's, I just wanted to remind you, it's 820, no 720. And so, would you like for me to go up? Would you like for this and that? So what she was doing was letting me know we, we need to get going. <laughs> you know, we need to get going. I appreciate that. I really do appreciate that. You know, everybody might not, but I do appreciate that. And I, I just love it, you know. And Ada just takes care of everything. And um, Julia washing dishes. Praise God. <laughs> Running errands. <laughs> uh, she's, she's new. And, and Ellen has been with us a long time, since 17. Ellen is the ambassador. She replaces me if I'm not here. Ellen stays in and she prays. She's been on the call for so long with us until she knows what I'm going to say and what I'm going to do. So I thank God for her and what have you. Um, I'm super excited to see my girl Celeste come in tonight. She was a blessing to us. Celeste was here a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Right. Celeste, how long have you been here now? Three, four years. It ain't been four years yet. Mm -hmm. Two? Just two? Three. Two and a half. Three. Two and a half. Two and a half. Well, this is where we were. We was, we was having meetings when Celeste first came. Well, the first one was actually down the street. It seems like it's been longer than that. I tell you what, we do so much, you know. Rise up, dude. We just do. We, you know, what we do is we hear God and obey. And um, Mother Simone's spiritual father was Normal Hayes before he passed away, right? and he has a little book called "Blessing of Obedience." And in that book, it says. If you obey God in everything, the devil can't catch you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and that's what we do. Now, he be on my heels, but he, but he be on my heels, okay? <laughs> he don't catch me. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So uh, Ada, uh, I asked her to come and make an announcement, right? And to just share a little bit. And then um, we're going to... Uh, she writing me a message now. <laughs> they keep me timely. Um, she's she's gonna just share a little bit. Uh, share real quick. She's from Miami. Wow. My girl from Miami. God send you know. We cry out and cry out for help for what God has called us to do in the city. And um, she has um, she's one of those cries to the Lord. <laughs> and you know what? I want to recognize my, my baby over here. Robert. Y'all remember Robert? Some of you might remember Robert. Yeah. I remember Robert. He was here for the tent. 
Yep. When the tent was up, him and his family. Here in 2017, the very first center of. Uh, oh, you were! Yes. That's right. Oh, my Lord. Amen. Very first converted. Robert <laughs> reached out to me when he heard that I was coming into In Session City before I got here, before we even got here. And he's just such a, uh, he's like a, he's kind of an all around guy, but he's an electrician actually. But he's like, he can do a whole lot. Ooh, bless the Lord. Amen. So we're going to move along. She held up that sign. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> We're going to let Ada um, just um, make it a few announcements that may be quicker than me. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, okay, so I have a couple of announcements. We have a couple of what we call merch. Um, right on the back over here, we have some shirts and as one shirts. Now, I do want to share that these shirts carry breakthrough words. Um, when we wear them, we really are representing that God is greater. When we are wearing as one, we're declaring there is unity because God is with us. So when you look at these shirts and you really just, you know, the beautiful colors, I really enjoy them. But what we're really looking at is at the content and what you're really telling. If the world can wear shirts about rappers and this and that and whatnot, we can really represent God even in what we wear. So you have some shirts on the back. Um, and uh, some um, sweaters and jackets. Um, but we also have these wonderful books. So this is uh, Pastor Wesley book, and it's Intercession City Lives Again. Powerful book. This is God's history here. This is what God intended um, Intercession City to be and what happened to it, but what he's going to continue to do to rise up this city. So when you are looking at this book, you're really looking at God's history, a piece of what God intended to uh, for the city to be and uh, we also have pastor arabella's book it's called rise up and tell it intercessors term uh, testimony journal and um this is uh, pastor had a collection of different testimonies from different uh, intercessors so this book is for ten dollars and this one is for um 25. we also have um towards the back the ark of the covenant um, so I love this story um, because it's it's something that I can't wait to see happen. Um, God spoke that there's going to be a life-size tabernacle here, and we are believing God for that and a lot more. And um, we have in the back we have a, a a poster picture, and we also have the Ark of the Covenant. Um, when you donate two hundred and fifty dollars or more, you will have the Ark of the Covenant that's in the back. Beautiful. And if you do 500 or more, you'll get um, a book and the Ark of the Covenant with its poster. So these are the announcements. Um, I'm gonna hand it over. <laughs> just, Thank you. You did a lovely job. Just, just give a, give a little yeah. short testimony. I love, you know, you've come so far. Just, just give a um, So testimony, um, God is just so great. He is so wonderful. You know, um, sometimes we, tend to miss the little things, and the little things are those kisses that God gives us every day. I remember um, Mother Simone in that special hospital, and she's like, you know, Jesus really loves when we kiss him and go, mmm. and, and it's just so good. It really stuck to me because, you know, the way she brought it forth is true. You know, we're so quick to show love to people around us. We're so quick to show love to our animals, our pets, and everything. But God, God wants that love, you know? Um, and that that's really short because for me, it means that God wants my love. Yes. You know, he yeah. really loves it. And one thing that I know is that God really don't need us, but he wants us. Mm -hmm. He's God alone, alone, alone. He can do anything and everything. But to choose us, to want us to be part of that, it is so honoring and humbling. Um, being part of Rise Up, being here in Intercession City um, is such a blessing because <laughs> when I came across uh, Pastor Arabella, um, she was doing her summit in 2020, and um, I don't even know how I came across it in Eventbrite, and I'm like, oh, they're doing a live feed, right? So I went into the live, and uh, I was one of those people calling in the middle of her event, and I'm like, I can't log out, I don't know how to get to it and whatnot. Finally got connected, and then she started talking about Intercession City, and like everybody else, and she, that's why she mentions it, I'm like, Intercession City? 
she probably means there's a lot of intercessors there, but not that actually called Intercession City. So I went out, um, into the map, I'm like, oh wow, it is real, real city. So um, when I looked at the distance, I was like, oh, that's pretty far. And I looked and I said, well, God, um, I really would like to visit this city, right? But never in my thought that I was really going to be here. Um, then and during that week of the summit, I was just so drawn. I said, Lord, I want to be under her covering. And here before, and you know, this is in 2020, um, the Lord really connected me and Pastor, and then to rise up, and then to these wonderful women of God and Pastor Wesley to really just be part of God's history. See, we're so quick to be about God's, um, a man's history, but God's history is so much important. Amen. And um, so that's just a quick testimony of how I made it here and how blessed it is. And not only is God drawing me, but it's also drawing my family. So whatever it is that God calls you to do, don't forsake his voice. Be obedient. You know, really leave whatever you got to leave because he's worth it. Because yes. he did it all for us. And what we can do is all for him when he calls us to do it. Yes. Amen. 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 special yeah. she's super special you know she she just uh come on sweet man she's super super special and you know i i when i came out i just thought you know what she, she, her and julia are educators and there's another lady living in the area that keeps stopping by talking to us about doing something with education in intercession city this lady she just loves intercession city and she wants to do something with education and I look at them like, gosh, you're setting it up. <laughs> you're setting it up. We won't have to do it. They, the three of them can do it. Praise God, you know. But isn't that powerful? Amen. This baby right here has been coming here for six months. Um, God spoke to her. I believe it was March. And, and she's been coming, driving from Fort Myers three hours. And she comes and works with the ministry, stays at my house, and, and <laughs> she gets to watch me. You know, and listen to me, and you know, fall asleep on me, and <laughs> I'm, you know, the third and fourth watch, and she's the first and the second watch, and, you know, that kind of thing. But it's amazing. She's just have solved problems that had really been a headache for two or three years. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that kind of amazing. But I just, this is, this is her last meeting where she's coming every week. She's been coming every week for six months. Uh, and staying for four, four days, and, and her husband approved, which I don't know if I can bake him a cake or something, you know, I don't know. <laughs> but he don't eat sweets. Oh, good. And so, uh, but you know, he, he's, he's, there's some things he don't eat that I think he should be eating, but anyway, <laughs> but anyway uh, I just wanted her to say hello and everything, because she'll be traveling with us throughout Florida, but sh this is her last weekend uh, week and coming. So I'm adjusting, y'all. I'm adjusting. But God is, uh, she's done, she served her time and done it well. Amen. She was obedient. It's just a huge sacrifice. Uh, and it just, it just, it just amazes me. Super, super amazes me. Uh, I think Deanna came for like six months or, or, or more, actually. And she flew in from Kentucky to come here and work for the ministry. In January, Deanna drove around Florida with us for three weeks she was here away from her husband. Those, these kind of things are significant. <laughs> to me, they're significant as to what God is saying about the ministry, you know? You don't have to be a part of Rise Up to be a part of As One. I wanna make that very clear. Uh, and this little lady right here has been my super duper help in recording the trainings and different things that we've been having. So if you become a part of, as one, to travel Florida, you can get the trainings and actually watch the trainings and review the trainings and everything, and still be a part and caught up on everything. But I just wanted to say hello, because she, she does it over there. She never does this right here, so, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, one thing about Pastor Arabella is she's very good at um, growing people because 
I don't know if it's that the Holy Spirit tells her she just picks up on what you do not want to do, and then she says, go do that. <laughs> okay, Mariah, go share. Well, the keyboard's right there. No, no, no. Go, you go talk to the people. Okay. So in uh, November of 21, I started praying. I had just um, really kind of rededicated my life to Christ, following some trials, following some heartbreak. And uh, I was pursuing him, and I was saying, God, God, send me a mentor. I need a mentor, God. I need someone to help me get to the next place. And um, and um, in January, Pastor Wesley and Pastor Arabella came down to Fort Myers, my hometown. I was at a meeting that I wasn't going to go to. They talked about a Terry service that I didn't even know what that was. And Holy Spirit said, you need to go there. So I did that in February. And then he started talking to me about Intercession City and said, you need to go for six months. And when he first said that to me, I didn't even hear him. Because I was like, certainly that was not God. God would not ask me to be away from my husband. God would not do that. And um, he kept telling me. So finally, I got out of the way. And I listened to him. And um, God's just faithful. It's hard to, to put into words how much I've grown in six months. And what God is launching me into. Because a lot of it is still don't know. But... Probably my favorite time staying with Pastor West and Pastor Arabella is actually, there was one night, it was about two in the morning because she does not sleep normal, she, is, she does not do normal stuff. Pastor Wesley was still awake, which was a miracle in itself, and so was I. And we were sitting in the living room and I said, would you just tell me how do I, how do I grow in discipline? And what they both had to say were completely different things, but... I knew Holy Spirit had told me, you need to grow in discipline. And their answers were so encouraging and so simple. And that's been amazing to just learn from the people who have done it. Learn from the people who have run with Jesus for way longer than I've even been on the earth. Because that's what the younger generation needs to do. We need Amen. to learn from those who are ahead of us. We need to honor their walk. We need to humble ourselves and learn from those who have gone before. So thank you both for welcoming me into your house. It's been an honor. I will miss it. And I will also not miss it because I really enjoy being home with my husband. <laughs> <laughs> and he's happy that I'm done too. <laughs> and that's all I have to say. She um, would go so long and then, you know, lose the baby. And so Aww. now we got us a seven, eight month old jumping big baby. Jumping oh, yeah. <laughs> big baby boy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want us before we just listen, when I turn it over to Mother and, and Gopal, I'm, I'm done. Okay. I'm like done. So I want us to go head on. Ada is going to go head on. Ada and Mariah. They're going to um, pass out the offering envelopes. Um, and there's some of you, I, I'm sure, that have already given because you were here earlier. But I want you to, <clears throat> I want you to search your heart to see if, if, uh, if there's an extra gift you should give or what have you. Because we want to take care of Gopao. We want to take care of Mother Simone. Um, and there's always expenses to everything. That, that food didn't just kind of fall out of heaven. But anyway, it might have tasted like it fell out of know. <laughs> but anyway, there's always expenses and, and all this kind of thing. And so I just want you all to uh, just be prayerful about what you want to give, what you're going to give. For those that are being commissioned, we had discussed that you would be giving a, a $100 offering or more <laughs> for this meeting. Um, 
You know, it's, I, I, I hum and laugh because I used to have, I had, when we first came into Intersection City, I had a problem with charging $17. <laughs> I didn't got over that, praise God. Um, <laughs> I really had a problem with it. I mean, I had to get counseling for that. <laughs> it was crazy. But, um, but anyway, uh, re recognize and always remember. <coughs> Lance Wilna taught me. Uh, some of you may know Lance Wilna. But Lance Wilna taught me. Uh, he, he said he used to have a problem with taking an offering, which you wouldn't think, you know, <laughs> knowing Lance. But he taught me and he said, he said, the Lord dealt with him and said that you cannot not take an offering. And you have to obey me. He said, because if you don't, the people don't have opportunity to sow in the, to the manifestation of the revelation they received. He, re God told him that it is related to the manifestation of the revelation you receive. That blessed me. And, and you know, he was like, it's, it's not the widow's might or whatever. He says, but the posture of your heart to sow into the manifestation, to bring it into reality, is when you actually give towards it. You, me personally, I believe you come into agreement with it. And when you come into the agreement with the revelation, with what God is doing in your life, with the promotion or what have you, when you come into agreement, even if it's just personal, find a way to sow for that manifestation to come to pass. Wesley and I give. We get, we take, we give. We give to benevolence, we give to the Jewish community, and we give to evangelism. We give every month. You know, we make sure mom's taken care of. <laughs> She's a widow, praise God. So, you've got to do, and then we just give it away. You know, Wes, we, we, me and Wesley always have this conversation when we get ready to have something. On who? <laughs> on the shirts and the books. <laughs> now I'm talking about ordering shirts, and he said, "Well, are you, how many? How many are you plan on giving away?" <laughs> I say, "How many books you plan on giving away?" You know. <laughs> so, but but anyway, I just want you all to just be prayerful. You know about giving and being a blessing. Amen. We love y'all. Go pa. Go pa. So we're just going to bring Gopal up to share. It's, it's, he's got the floor. Ada's going to pass the basket around. Amen. I learned this from Jimmy Square. Disciples that were started out as one commission. There's apostles, the twelve disciples, um, Mo Curly. <laughs> uh, I forgot to this, but anyway, <clears throat> anyway, uh, and they messed up. 
And so we have to start out in the numbers that God gives us. Now, God has given me a number tonight. I'm not sure why, but I'm going to release that to you here in just a moment. But, and also, there's something that apostolically, a lot of times we don't understand. One of the key things that God has given us ability is fragrance. You don't hear a lot about fragrance other than what you spray all over you and bash and pour all over you. That type of fragrance. The fragrance in this season is key mm. to understand what is good and what is bad. A good fragrance. I think I'm lopsided now. Oh, there you go. Okay, now I'm off. <laughs> Because there is, there is power in understanding the fragrance of God. God gives us a sweet wind, what my father called the sweet wind. A sweet wind is on a hot summer day, and all of a sudden a cool breeze comes, and there's a sweet fragrance with that. How many know God doesn't have bad breath? <laughs> I mean, he, he just sweet Amen. fragrance like nobody's business. And that's basically telling you, well done, my good and faithful servant. You did well today. And it's that sacred time, that sacred moment. So the power of fragrance of God. Now we're talking about apostolic. We're talking about apostles. We're talking about all these things. But apostle being the sent one in uh, many ways, in many directions, with many instructions, with many views, many things that need to take place, and not just one thing. And we're commissioned by the Father God for a purpose and to change things, to make disciples, just like these young ladies that were called up here, what they've been doing, the fathers of Christ, and maybe you just see them working cameras and playing pianos and things like that. But it goes way beyond that. That's, that's just a touch. Their gifts go way beyond that. And sometimes we'll just call them musicians or helpers. But they're, they're being commissioned to do the things of God in a city, in a ministry. To do great and mighty things. Uh, Acts 20, 28 says, Pay careful attention to yourself and to the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Pay, P-A-Y, attention, careful attention. And sometimes we may miss that. Now, we, they have our attention, but we have to pay careful attention attention to God and what God blesses us with and who uh, and who he blesses us with that's the act of a true apostle it's not just giving orders but it's paying careful attention to that individual and we in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, and that's the church. Those two that came up, that's the church of God, which he obtained with his blood. Now, the fragrance of God is true. But we need to understand this, this word fragrance. In Genesis 27, 27, and that's the number that God has given me tonight, 27. So he went to him and kissed him, and Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, and he blessed him and said, All the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. A fragrance is a pleasant 
sweet smell of God. I'm talking about God. I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about God. I don't know if intercessors ever get into that, but I have. There's a, there's a sweet fragrance when God begins to attend to you and release to you. If all of a sudden there's a sweet fragrance out of nowhere, mm -hmm. that's probably, you know, it's like an angel. Yeah. It's like an angel come to you all of a sudden. Maybe you see it in the sky, the clouds, whatever. But there's this sweet fragrance. The sweet smell of God is attending to you. I, I, can't, under, I can't imagine what God, the creator of all things, would actually <coughs> smell like. I want to think, because I love coffee, fresh ground <laughs> coffee. That's what I want to think God smells like. But I don't know if he does. But I know it's sweet, and I know it's it's a tremendous scent. It's, it's, it is a type of perfume. It's the Holy Spirit has that same. The Holy Spirit is not just speaking in tongues. I mean that's that's good, but the Holy Spirit goes way beyond that. And something that you just don't hear about is that fragrance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How it's been released. It's strange to many. And we have to be cautious in this season of this country. Be cautious of a strange fragrance of a nation. People don't understand that. They, you know, they try to look at the media and try to justify what's going on. But God releases a fragrance that doesn't stand well with you, doesn't sit well with you. It's not, it's not your forte because it's a strange fragrance of a nation. And this season, we're going to have to be in the 23rd season. We're going to have to be cautious of a strange fragrance moving in the land. The odor of scents by what we smell in our nose. That sense of smell, it takes that place. Now the prophetic number, I believe, and you might have other views and that's fine, you find your own views, is a new beginning. So we're getting ready, we have to get ready for the new beginning, that spiritual beginning, that spiritual awakening, a new, new awakening. Yeah. A positive moment of faith. It's a positive moment of faith, having faith in God, faith in what you're doing means more than anything. And the Holy Spirit comes upon the true apostle. And it doesn't look like death. You know, we need to look at death, the old things. Not as future, but death is the past. I died to the things of old. I'm a new creation. I'm, I have a new anointing, a new purpose in God. That old needle big pond died years ago. It's gone. No longer exists. It's dead. I don't look in the future. Oh. Oh, I'm excited here. Sorry. There we go. Okay. I don't look for death in the future. I look for life. Amen. I don't see Amen. the great of greatest things, the rapture or whatever we want to call it, as death. Those that live in God never die. Amen. I'll never die. I'll live. I may Amen. go somewhere else. That's right. 
right. But I'm going to live forever. Amen. And ever yes. and ever yes. and ever. And you will too. Amen. So don't look towards death as something in the future. The times that we're alone, those are the times that we dream. We have ideals and we're committed to whatever God wants. It could be love, it could be compassion, happiness, communication. Mentally, we're stable with a lot of faith. I think this nation, look at uh, Christianity or believers, church people, totally different than, in a, in a sense that they really don't understand what they're talking about, what they truly, truly mean. God is putting apostles together. God is an honorable God, and he is allowing... God is allowing us to be a part of him. Amen. So we need to allow God to do his will in us and through us and for us. Allow God to honor his word in you and through you. Honor the fragrance of God. I just think God has his most sweet-smelling fragrance there is. It's better in jupe. I wear jupe all the time. I've been going around to the Walgreens. That's where they sell jupe, jupe in Walmart. And Walgreens been going, going to get rid of jupe. And I've been getting the bargain, so I've been going all over Walgreens and get, buying my jupe. I got enough to last me two couple of years now. So we honor the fragrance of God. How? Through His will. Through His will. Not your will, but his will be done. Amen? Amen. Amen? Your call and his purpose is to be a sweet fragrance to God. That's your purpose. Well, I thought I was supposed to be a Christian. <laughs> well, you are. But your purpose is to be a sweet fragrance to God. It's like being around someone and there's that sweet fragrance. It's like being in prayer, being in intercession, and there's a fragrance that comes upon you. Mm. It's like the land. You know, I'm a land warrior myself. I love to pray over the land. I even eat dirt. Amen. Amen. I mean, some think that's foolish and crazy, but God created it. Amen. Amen. Sure did. So sometimes I just bend down and take me a little taste of dirt. Because it, to me, it has its own fragrance. The earth has its own fragrance. Why? Did some man put it there? No. God did, though. God gave it that fragrance. So we honor the fragrance. How? Through his will. Not your will, but God's will be done. Your call in his purpose is to be a sweet fragrance to God. What is your call, apostle? What is your call, prophet, evangelist, teacher, pastor? Your call is to be a sweet fragrance. To his people. Amen. To God. When you come to church, to the house of God, when you get into to prayer and intercession, the sweet fragrance of God comes around as you begin to pray. Maybe you pray all night. Maybe you pray by yourself. There's a sweet fragrance that God begins to release. But you never hear about that, do you? Hardly ever hear it. It's always about the Holy Spirit, and that's good. And the angels, that's good. All that's good. But what I like is the sweet fragrance of God. Amen. That allows me to know that God is with me. 
So your call and his purpose as an apostle or prophet or whatever is to be a sweet fragrance to God. You that pray in this city, intercession city, you're a sweet fragrance to God. It's not just prayer. It's not just rebuking the devil. It's not just coming against something. But you're releasing a sweet fragrance in a city. You're releasing a sweet fragrance over that child, that baby. That husband, that wife, those children, those grandchildren. Why don't we smile when we see grandma and grandpa when we see those grandchildren come to the house? Is it because they're our grandchildren? Because they carry a, a sweet fragrance of God. A mother gave birth to that child. They're a part of you. Their fragrance is a part of you. You're a part of them. So, God's will be done. Your call in this purpose is to be a sweet fragrance to God. To preach, to teach, to prophesy, spread the word. I like to smell the earth when the farmers are out disking the, the soil. And you know, there's something about that earth that, that you just can't get nowhere. You can't get it at Walmart. <laughs> it only comes from the earth that God has created. It has its own smell, its own destiny. The sweet fragrance of God. Spreading the word is a sweet fragrance. In just a moment, I'm going to anoint you all. Well, I might have a, a Bella and Wesley do it. Put them to work. Mm. This is their job anyway, not mine. <laughs> Where we come from fear to honor. I know we're to fear the Lord. But we're also to honor the Lord. Honor God. Old Roberts come to our church about two months before he passed. And to be with the Lord, go with the Lord. Because I wrote a book about women warriors and he wanted to meet me. And he kept telling us, you know, maybe I'll come out Friday, maybe I'll be there Saturday, maybe I'll be there one Monday, I don't know when I'll be there, but I won't come and meet you. Well, he did that because he didn't want us to announce, Old oh, Roberts today speaking at our church. And all of a sudden he came in on a Sunday morning. Tall man, lean man, come strolling in there sit down on the front row, and I said, Brother Roberts, you have anything to say? Oh, no, son, I just come listen to you. I thought to myself, right, you come listen to me. <laughs> and so I got up to speak a little bit later. I said, Brother Roberts, you sure you don't have anything to say? Well, I might have something to say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Three and a half hours later, <laughs> we were dismissed. <laughs> and but the thing that he said, he said, son, you've been holding on to the rope a long time, haven't you? I said, yes, sir. He said, from now on, everywhere you go, I want you to release, release health, wealth, and miracles. Ooh, amen. Oh, every wow. reservation, every city you go to, every church you go to, wherever you have a meeting, you release health, wealth, and miracles. Health, wealth, and miracles is that good fragrance. And I have a special anointing oil that I want to release tonight to you. And from fear to honor, honor God is that health. Honoring God is that wealth. Honoring God is that miracle. 
fear in itself, man's fear, probably doesn't have a sin. But God's does. The fear of the Lord. Now, there's certain smells and that animals put out and chemicals and that they carry and it produces a certain smell like a skunk. Mm -hmm. Not a sweet fragrance by no mm -hmm. means. So he teaches us, he's teaching us as apostles to fear his will. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I think heaven has a certain fragrance. Behind the spirit of fear, behind the culture of fear, is the people who are controlled. We have a nation today that's being controlled. And how are they being controlled? By fear. Fear of disease, fear of this, fear of that, loss, finances, whatever the case may be, it's always fear. The culture of fear being released to control people. Job said, the thing that I fear has come upon me. The fear that I fear has come upon me. Now, Noah built an ark, altar to the Lord. He took every animal, bird, and burnt offerings on the altar. And the, the Bible says the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. A soothing aroma. How could that be? when you're burning animals. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Man's heart can be evil from youth. Nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. While the earth remains seed time and harvest, Cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Genesis talks about Noah building the altar to the Lord. But God, the Lord says, never again. Never again. That's the sweet fragrance. So, in this season, people, we're to endure. And the endurance is not just being strong and bold and, and, and things of this nature. But the endurance is to hold out against and sustain without impairment or yielding to anything. In other words, hold out, be strong, be bold. For the Lord thy God is with you. As long as the earth endures, people, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and wheat, day and night, we'll never cease. <coughs> so why do we fear death? <coughs> we'll never cease. We'll always be. We'll always be. I think that's in Philippians Four, eight, where it says finally brethren after a long time dealing with difficult times God's spell are well, let me say this way God's spell is God's smell in other words, it's a good thing. Huh. It's a God thing. It's a God moment. So in closing, meditate on these things. 
whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, and whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, report, because this will bring honor to you. If there's anything virtue or if anything there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. That sweet wow. fragrance, the sweet wind of God will be with you. So when you go to bed at night, when you wake up in the morning, smell the fragrance of God. Mm. It may be like that coffee, mm. but it really is the sweet fragrance of God. And when you smell the sweet fragrance, I always look at it this way. God has honored me. Oh. He's, we worship him, we praise him, but he also, he praises us. Mm -hmm. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Yeah. We're obedient and he's obedient. We're holy, he's holy. We have joy, we have tears of joy, he has tears of joy. So honor, people, is a sweet fragrance. I honor you. When someone comes and shakes your hand and smiles at you, they are honoring you with a sweet fragrance. That's what you smile. It's not because they just shake your hand. Or say, how you doing? Good to see you. It's that sweet fragrance that they're releasing. It's a release of the fragrance of God to you and through them to you. Because our prayers in this city, in this state, honors God. A pleasing, pleasing fragrance. Paul describes the sweet aroma, our sweet aroma, as pure. Purity, in other words, thoughts, pure thoughts, spiritually, living, perseverance. Ephesians 5 1 says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also have loved us, and give himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. The earth remains. God is still in control of this earth because he created it. His place, his house, his body, his land, his air, his wind. The earth remains seed time and harvest, planting. Reaping what you sow, in other words. The heat and the cold he controls. The summer and the winter his seasons. Day and night his days shall not cease. So don't fear death. Anything. Fear the living. Am I living right for God today? What's he say to, re why does he say repent daily? Mm. God gives honor to us all. The small business, you that are businessmen and women, maybe it's a small business, but he honors that business because it's God's business. The big businesses, he honors God's business. 
when you're at your all, because it, his, his all is already there. When you're at your all, his all is already there. Let's let God smell the fragrance of our all. What is honor? Honoring God, the fragrance that he has given us. I like to go in stores. I don't sit on the stump and preach. But when I go in the stores, I might see an elderly man or elderly woman. I'll call that man. How you doing, young man? Mm -hmm. What's that old man do? He just smiles. What a beautiful lady. That old woman just smiles. That's releasing the fragrance of God. Amen. So let God smell your all in these days to come. All honor goes to God anyway, and all of his sweet fragrance. Honor thy father, thy mother, that thy days be long, not short, in the land which Jehovah thy God given thee, sweet fragrance. I want to... Um, Wesley and Bella come here. In other words, a gun means come here quickly, not slowly. Now we're going to commission you in a little bit, but I want you to be commissioned by this. And this is the palm of Gilead. Mm, I love that smell. Mm. And if you be so kind, to anoint each and every person in this room with that. Hopefully you do it. Romans 12, 1 says, Honor. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, in which your spiritual, which your spirit worship. Now, the prayer that we're releasing his health, wealth, and miracles. It could be certainly your body, finances, mm -hmm. breakthrough, jobs, special favor, repentance, oh. vehicles. Maybe you need a vehicle. Maybe you need a miracle. And what they're doing is they're releasing that. I guess Wesley and won't let her do anything. <laughs> anyway, health, wealth, and miracles. He can't get away from that smell. That's what the problem is. Can you smell it? Beautiful smell. It's known as a medical, in a medical term, the of healing. 
it will actually heal your body. You know, sweet fragrance will heal your body. When you go into a hospital, and you're in a hospital, what do you smell? Alcohol, most of the time. Nothing sweet. No, no beautiful fragrance, by no means. Unless the nurse comes in, it's got nice perfume on. It's always just one smell. So it doesn't release healing in the body. So health, wealth, and miracles is what they're doing when they're releasing that over you. You're receiving that health that you need in your body. How many, how many needs a healing in your body? Wealth. How many needs wealth? Breakthrough. Financial breakthrough. Come on, let's go stand. How many needs a miracle? Yes. Amen. Amen. Now, I've been releasing this everywhere I go, and I just got a call today. I, I, uh, I work a lot with the Burmese people in Oklahoma. There's about 8,000. 8,500, I think, in Tulsa. And there's about 4.5, I think, million in the United States of America. They're wonderful people. And I just got a report just before I got off the plane that a miracle happened. A miracle, several miracles happened in the church. I just left a couple of weeks ago. But they're happening, the miracles the healing, the wealth. And so, we are releasing that. Now, as they're doing that, I want to do this. Our native people, They would always have the flute. You've heard of the native flute. Yes. And what they was doing with the flute, it would help deliver the message. And this oh. message I want to give to you in closing is based out of Jeremiah mm -hmm. over these two. Would you stand here, please? It's like God is saying to you, and you are the Jeremiah's tonight. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nation. You may say, Lord, but I cannot speak. For I'm just young in this ministry. But the Lord said, will say to you, do not say I'm young or youth, for you shall go to all who I sent you. You will go everywhere I send you. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord stretched forth his hand and touched their lips. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched their mouth. And the Lord said to them, Behold, I put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations, over the kingdoms, to root out, to pull down, to destroy, and throw down, and to build, and to plant. And what that means is to rebuild and replant this city this intercession city. And there will be others that will join you. Also, he says, 
What do you see? I see a branch of the almond tree. Then the Lord said, You have seen well. For I'm ready to perform my word through you. And the word of the Lord came to them the second time, saying, What do you see? And he said, I see a boiling pot. It's facing away from the north. Then the Lord said to me, Out of the north calamity shall break forth on all the inhabitants of the land. For behold, I am calling all the families, the kingdoms of the north, says the Lord, that I shall come and each one set his throne at the entrance gates of Jerusalem. Again, all the walls and all around against all the cities of Judah, I will utter my judgment against them concerning all their wickedness. Therefore, prepare yourself and arise. So it's in this time that we want to commission his mama coming up. He's going to come up. Or... of the parcel was so sweet. And my message isn't quite as sweet. Hallelujah. It's good, though. Amen. The Lord gave this to me last evening. And um, this commissioning, uh, Arabella and Wesley, means that you have been called, chosen, and appointed as one of the fivefold callings given to the church in Ephesus. Ephesians, excuse me, Ephesians 4, for the perfecting of the saints and for the work of the ministry. This commissioning is not for personal fame or glory. The apostolic anointing is to lead, guide, correct, discipline, and to bring spiritual order to the body of Christ as you teach and testify of Jesus. Wesley and Arabella, you are being sent out as apostles of Jesus Christ, as messengers sent to spread the gospel of salvation and called by God to carry out the mission of the grow, uh, of, and growing of his church. Let it be so. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So if everyone would just uh, stand and put your hands towards these two, for well, they are commissioned. Yeah, son, come on up here. They're being commissioned. As apostles, not just in Florida, but everywhere they go, they will be the apostles of the land to do great and mighty things from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. They will walk with honor and with peace and with joy. They will do, they will call, and they will speak the words of God wherever they go. You will have authority over the land that you walk on, the air that you breathe, the words that you speak. People will acknowledge the apostolic order that you carry. Only from God. That apostolic fragrance that apostolic peace, that apostolic 
order that God will be giving you. He called you before the nations to do great and mighty things. Don't ever forget that. You're not called by man. We're not calling you. God is. God is speaking to you. Man is not. Woman is not. But God is. From this day on, Wesley and Arabella, <clears throat> apostolically, you will move in an apostolic order. It'll be different than what you have been doing. You'll see a difference. There'll be a difference. And the fragrance will be around you always. The apostolic fragrance. The sweetness of God, the fragrance of God, the Word of God will show you and move you and join you in His peace over the land. And I, for one, honor you because we need land warriors more than ever than we ever had before in all our days. Those that understand the land those that are not afraid of the land, those that will speak over the land, those that will pray over the land, and those that will walk over the land with great authority. So we welcome apostles Wesley and Arabella to the land, to the city, to the nations. Apostolic order. Let it come your way. Let it ring out and ring in and ring forth the good news. In 27 days, there'll be a perfection in you like never before. In 27 days, things will begin to shift and change. 27 days, the health, wealth, and miracles will be released from the crown to the sole of your feet. 27 days, God has given you that number to order and to move and to remove things that may not be. There's going to be a shift, a change. Not a bad thing, but a good thing. A good shift. A purpose shift. A loving shift. He is honoring you this night. On this very night, He has honored you. The dreams are coming. The dreams are coming. So prepare. He will give you rest and peace. You'll be healthier than ever. You'll be wealthier than ever. Miracles will come your way, you will see miracles taking place that you never believed would take place. So Father, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior, we bless these two. In my native tongue, I say, Hele agono, Hele often, meaning always go forward, never look back. Kohatane aleogam. She said, like, oh, have to be non day. A starlet, oh, have to be. Way hey, all the day, he shall be there. Always go with good hearts, good minds, good bodies. And God will honor you always. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, always go forward and never look back at the past. But just the presence of God in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah.
alleluia. E nella sonda di Candia, onde le mahaia rumandia, mi curusci ma nella caia onde le messia. Ye, 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 come to the Kanda, la makonga rabiatata. Wesley, I called you. When you were three years old, I called you. And I took you out of this nasty place at that time. But I said, I've returned you now to rebuild it as my way of saying thank you for standing for me. Thank you for coming back. And thank you for rebuilding a place that I had sanctioned many, many years ago. And Arabella, Arabella, you stood, you fought. You stand through many storms and trials, and I've been with you all those times. And I say, I thank you for being faithful. You've raised up your children on your own. You did so many things on your own. You traveled the state on your own. But I was with you. I was with you. I was with you. And I brought you two together. By my spirit, says the Lord. It was a big surprise to everyone. And it was a big surprise to you. But you walked it through when you thought at one time that others would try to take you away from each other. But I had gave you a message, get married and make it real and start walking with me and sh I'll show you exactly what you're to do. And I say, you are doing what I asked you to do. I am well pleased. This is just the beginning of a new journey that will explode, saith God. Don't sit back. Keep going as I lead, saith the Lord. Be blessed. I bless you tonight. I say I'm well pleased. I am happy, 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 says the Lord. And everyone said amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, amen. Well, That's all good, isn't it? Let's have a song and everyone come and shake hands with the Apostle Wesley and Arabella. Amen. 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 And rub all your tears on them. We'll do the song. You want
I just feel like I need to lay on the floor and cry out to God, you know. Amen. Um, hallelujah. Uh, um, <laughs> what the Lord showed me is those that want to come up, um, we're just going to pray that the Lord will release the 12 wells of revival so that you can go to different places and release it into other areas of the state of Florida or wherever the Holy Spirit is. Wherever we're going. Uh, that, uh, uh, just come up and we'll pray for each one of you. And, uh, and, uh, uh, yes. Um, and we're going to drink a lot of Okay. We'll wait. Uh, we would like y'all to come up and pray with us. If, you, if you're a doctor, big pun. What? I'm off duty. You're done. We want you all to just as. as uh, it's just real quick. Uh, yeah. Just lay hands and. We're just gonna lay hands on those that are uh, going to be uh, going with us traveling Florida. Uh, we want you to come and stand right. and do it quickly. Right. Praise Amen. God. Amen. 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 That's right. That's good. Are you going? Are you going? Come on, Mom. I'll make that easy. Well, I'm through. Come on. If you plan to go sometimes, I guess you go sometimes. I, um, I am putting, this is my delete. I've had this for 20 some years. Um, it was, uh, it actually was from my, my previous marriage. Uh, my former husband and I were married to Lee, Mother Marius. He was a tremendous man of healing. Um, the word of God raised the dead and I was walking out the house today this morning and my heart you know the Holy Spirit told me to give this to Leslie oh. very unusual to say the least right but I honor his former wife and he honors my former husband. Wow. This is the way we function. Mm -hmm. Wow. Amen. And uh, I never thought I would let go of this, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with letting go of it. Mm -hmm. But the Lord told me that when I married my former husband, he said, I put you together to complete his ministry and begin mine. Mm -hmm. And when mom prayed for me, because <laughs> I wasn't in a hurry to run back to Pensacola because we hadn't had the convergence. We got married and I was like, I can't leave because we haven't had the convergence. Mom said, you got to go with your husband. <laughs> you know? And Mom prayed for me. And the Lord told me, remember what I told you with your former husband. Now I'm telling you with the husband that I'm giving you that you're in ministry together and to go forward. And so when the Lord told me, I was walking out the Holy, walking out this morning, the Holy Spirit said, take your tallit. So I grabbed it and he said, I want you to give it to Wesley. Because Wesley served all the other men in ministry. He kept them in ministry. <laughs> Through the accounting, he really did. And God said, it is his time to walk under the anointing Mother prayed for me when my former husband was passing away. And she passed that mantle on to me. She called me and said, God, I believe God wants his mantle to be passed on to me. Wow. He was 24 years older than me. And the man of faith, great faith. Total, I mean, great faith. Wow. And the Lord told me today to take that mantle that is a part of this and give it to Wesley. He has healing hands. He's a tremendous man of faith. And he walks the word. He walks the word. 
This is not annoying. You see how it's all anointed <laughs> and oily? This is the way the body of Christ functions. We're brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. So, uh, I'm going to be my cowboy, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it is my cowboy. <laughs> He wore his boots today, praise God. <laughs> Amen. So we're going to be, for those that are committing to travel forward with us, we're, uh, we're just going to be laying hands on on you. Wesley's going to be important in the world. So I'm going to be releasing the glory. I'm going to be releasing the glory. That's what the Lord told me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Am
you go better today. It's okay. 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 It